In the past, we compared 3 inch ratchets, and the gear wrench brand performed extremely well. But what about the quarter inch size? Well, let's see if that $8 ratchet can perform just as well as the one that cost $238. We'll see if this $238 titanium prototype ratchet can destroy the competition. In the first test, we'll compare the working arc swing of the ratchets. Then we'll compare the back drag. Finally, we'll test the failure load of each brand. At a price of only $8 is this DuraWatch brand. It's a quick release ratchet with 72 teeth. It claims to deliver a 5 degree arc swing for working in tight spaces. The DuraWatch is made in China, and the DuraWatch weighs 153.8 grams. Manufacturers sell ratchets using marketing information about arc swing and tooth count. They're trying to convince you that their ratchet is the best for working in a tight space. So let's see how the ratchets actually compare working within a 30 degree space. Gear slop, tooth count, handle width, and excessive tolerances are all factors. We'll see how many right to left passes it takes to spin the dial for one complete 360 degree rotation. And the Dirt Watch has a very wide handle and a very sloppy gear set. Working within a 30 degree space is only making about 5 degrees of progress with each pass. And the Dirt Watch is finally finished after 72 right to left passes. At a price of $10 is this Duratec brand. It's a 90 tooth ratchet It claims to have a 4 degree arc swing. Teardrop shaped head lets you remove the socket instantly. The Duratec is made in China. 173.4 grams for the Duratec. With an extra wide handle and a very sloppy 90 tooth gear set, the Duratec is also struggling quite a bit in this test. At around 8.5 degrees of progress with each pass, the Duratec is finally finished after 40.9 passes. At a price of $11 is this Sada brand. It's a 72 tooth quick release ratchet that claims to have a 5 degree arc swing. Teardrop low profile head offers better access. Flush mounted switch allows you to single handedly change directions. The SADA is made in China and the SADA is pretty light at 106.4 grams. Although the SADA has 72 teeth it has a much more refined gear set than the Duratec and the SADA moves into the lead at 23.9 passes or about 40% more efficient than the Duratec. At a price of $13 is this Crescent brand. It's a 72 tooth ratchet that claims to have a 5 degree arc swing. Manufactured from chrome alloy steel for better strength and durability. Quick release allows for fast socket changes. The Crescent is made in China and it's 108.5 grams for the Crescent. And the Crescent also has 72 teeth and seems more refined than the Sada. With more than 10 degrees of progress with each pass, the Crescent moves into the lead at 22.3 passes. The first of two gear wrench ratchets we'll be testing is the Gear Wrench 90 which sells for $22. It's a 90 tooth ratchet that claims to have a 4 degree arc swing. It claims to be one of the strongest ratchets on the market. We're going to test that. The Gear Wrench is made in Taiwan. And the Gear Wrench 90 weighs 104.29 grams. And the Gear Wrench 90 tooth ratchet is performing very well at around 20 degrees of progress with each right to left pass. And the Gear Wrench 90 performed by far the best yet at only 18 passes. Very impressive. At a price of $24 is this Milwaukee brand. It's a 90 tooth ratchet that claims a 4 degree arc swing. It claims increased strength during heavy duty applications. Slim profile ratchet with a flush directional lever. The Milwaukee is made in Taiwan. And the Milwaukee weighs 145.5 grams. Compared to the gear wrench, the Milwaukee has a little more gear slop and a wider handle. However, at 22.6 passes, the Milwaukee still performed good enough to move into the second position. At a price of $27 or $5 more than the gear wrench 90, is this gear wrench 120 XP? So is it worth the extra $5? It has double stack paws that alternatively engage the 60 tooth gear. It claims to deliver a very impressive 3 degree arc swing. The gear wrench is made in Taiwan. And the gear wrench 120 XP weighs 105.67 grams. And the gear wrench 120 might have more teeth than the gear wrench 90, but the gear set isn't quite as efficient. However, 18.6 passes is still very good and good enough to move into the second position. At a price of $28, is this Icon brand which is sold at Harbor Freight. 90 tooth gear to gear mechanism produces a tight 4 degree arc swing. Polished chrome finish easily wipes clean. Ergonomic handle design reduces hand fatigue and slippage. The Icon is made in Taiwan. 139.78 grams for the Icon. Just like the other ratchets, the Harbor Freight Icon has a 90 tooth gear set. And the Icon is making almost 16 degrees of progress with each pass. 22.6 passes the same as the Milwaukee. At a price of $29 is this Husky ratchet. The ratchet has 144 teeth and Husky claims it allows for a 2.5 degree arc swing. Designed for professional users. Made of alloy steel to provide excellent durability. Low profile head for excellent access to tight spaces. The Husky is a product of Taiwan and finished in mainland China. And the Husky weighs 114.12 grams. And with 144 teeth, the Husky is in a league of its own. And the Husky is making over 20 degrees of progress with each pass. And 17.6 passes is good enough to take the lead from the 90 tooth gear wrench. Very impressive. At a price of $43 is this Wearer brand. Slim and compact design for confined spaces. 
It's a 72-tooth ratchet that claims to have a 5-degree arc swing. It claims to have an ultra-strong and smooth 5-ratchet mechanism. The wearer is made in the Czech Republic. And the wearer weighs 111.75 grams. And the wearer has half the teeth as a husky, and it's only making about 15 degrees of progress with each pass. And the wearer is finally finished after 24 passes. At a price of $50 is this Hazit brand. The Hazit is a 90-tooth ratchet that claims a 4-degree arc swing. It claims it can deliver up to 120 newton meters of torque or 88 foot-pounds. The Hazit is made in Germany. And the Hazit is very light at only 79.95 grams. And the Hazit has a very large handle but the 92 gear set is very efficient and well designed and it has it moved the dial 360 degrees and 22.5 passes which is good enough to move into the fourth position at a price of 54 dollars is this koken brand the ratcheting mechanism appears to have around 22 teeth the koken is made in japan 90.47 grams for the koken unfortunately the 54 dollar koken only has 22 teeth and the gear set isn't able to advance within the 30 degree space at a price of 86 dollars is this stallwheel brand it's an 80 tooth ratchet designed for a four and a half degree arc swing Slim handle, quick release lock, slim and compact. The stall wheel is made in Germany. And the stall wheel is also very light at 87.23 grams. And the stall wheel has 80 teeth, but the gear set is very efficient and well designed. And the stall wheel rotated 360 degrees and 23 right to left passes. At a price of $95 is this Mac Tools ratchet. The Mac Tools is made in USA. It's a 90 tooth ratchet that claims to have a four degree arc swing. Its compact head design allows users access to even the tightest work areas. And the Mac Tools is heavier than average at 132.09 grams. And the Mac Tools is making 17 degrees of progress with each swing. At 21 passes, the Mac Tools perform better than average. If you're looking to flex a little, why not go with this gold-colored Nepros 90-tooth ratchet? It is pretty expensive at $108, but then again, it is a 90-tooth premium brand ratchet. The Nepros is made in Japan. And the Nepros weighs 112.55 grams. And a Japanese-made Nepros looks very impressive, but its large diameter handle is using a valuable workspace. However, the Nepros did perform a little bit better than average at 23 passes. Also, the price of $108, the same price as the Nepros, is this Proto brand. I wasn't able to find a regular ratchet, so I went ahead and purchased this flex head. It's a 90-tooth ratchet that claims to have a 4-degree arc swing. Neural bands allow for increased grip and slip resistance. The Proto is made in USA. 207.48 grams for the Proto. And the Proto is making very close to 18 degrees of progress with each pass, which is very good for a 90-tooth ratchet. And the Proto moves into the fourth position at 19.8 passes. At a price of $111, is this Snap-on brand. It's a 72-tooth ratchet that claims to have a five degree arc swing. It has six teeth in contact with gear to provide strength and durability. The Snap-on is made in USA. And the Snap-on is pretty light at 94.12 grams. And the Snap-on only has 72 teeth, but it uses a dual paw design that makes it very efficient. And the Snap-on barely edges out the Proto at 19.6 passes to take away the fourth position. At a price of $238, the most expensive ratchet we'll be testing is built by TRO Designs. I personally paid $238 for this prototype and a manufacturer might make further improvements based upon the project farm review. The ratchet model name is Super Leggero, which in Italian means super light. It has a titanium 3D printed knurled switch, fully machined titanium body and carbon fiber handle. It's designed to have a very low back drag and tightest tolerance on square drive to socket engagement. It's a 72 tooth ratchet that should have around a five degree arc swing. The TRO ratchet is made in USA and the TRO ratchet is the lightest in the lineup at 54.68 grams. For a 72 tooth ratchet, the TRO prototype is performing very well at around 15 degrees of progress with each right to left pass. And it's 23.8 passes for the TRO prototype. So I even buy a ratchet if you can just print one at home. This ratchet is printed of carbon fiber nylon. We'll test it near the end of the video and we'll see how much torque it can actually take. And a carbon fiber ratchet is very light at only 38.5 grams. A ratchet with an efficient working arc swing can save a lot of time and the Husky came out on top at 17.4 right to left passes. The 90 tooth gear wrench finished in second at 18 and gear wrench 120, 18.6 passes. If you're working within a tight space, a ratchet with a lot of back drag can really slow things down. If there's enough space, adding resistance to the socket with finger pressure allows the ratchet to make progress, but that's not always an option. So let's test back drag using a 7 8 inch socket, fishing line, and a scale. And the Dura Watch has 238 grams of back drag. And the Duratec has even more back drag than the Dura Watch at 335 grams. And Asada performed about the same as the Dura Watch at 242 grams. And the Crescent has the lowest back drag yet at 209 grams. And the Gear Rinse 90 is a little bit stiff at 288 grams, definitely an area for improvement. And the Waki performed by far the best yet at only 117 grams, very impressive. And the Gear Rinse 120 performed a little bit better than the Gear Rinse 90 at 203 grams. And the Harbor Freight Icon is the stiffest in the lineup so far at 411 grams. The Husky did the best for working 
Dark Swing and has done a great job on this test at 165 grams. And Aware moves into a two-way tie with the Milwaukee for first place at 117 grams. And it has it as almost as stiff as the Durtek at 323 grams. And the Koken moves into the lead over the Milwaukee and Aware at 99 grams. And the Star Wheel has even more back drag than the Icon at 422 grams. And the Mac Tools perform very well at only 170 grams, which is well below the 200 gram target. And the Nebros performed even better than the Mac Tools at only 152 grams of back drag. And the Proto offers a very good working arc swing and a low back drag at only 168 grams. The Snap on also offers a very good working arc swing and low back drag at only 181 grams. And the TRO Designs prototype only requires a feathers touch at 36 grams. Very impressive! And the TRO Ratchet has the least amount of back drag at only 36 grams. Koken finished in second at 99 grams, and Milwaukee and Wera tied for third place at 117. A ratchet that offers both a great working arc swing performance and low back drag pressure is the perfect combination. So combining the working arc swing test with the back drag test, the Husky came out on top with an average finish of first place for the working arc swing and fifth for back drag. So that's an average finish of third place for the two events. Proto finished in second with an average finish of 5.5. Snap on a gear inch 120 averaged a sixth place finish. Ratchet head profile makes a huge difference when trying to access tight spaces. And the gear inch 90 has the shortest front to back profile at just over 9 millimeters. Crescent, Sada, Weir, Koken, Stallwheel, Husky, and Gear Inch 120 are also pretty compact at close to 10 millimeters. For the ratchet with the slimmest side to side profile, the Nepros is the most compact at just under 22 millimeters, and TRO is right at 22. Koken and Hazard are also very compact at just over 22 millimeters. If your hands are greasy, it can sometimes be a challenge trying to change directions with a stiff directional lever. And it takes 271 grams or just over a half pound of force to switch directions with the Dura Watch. And the Dura Tech requires even more force than the Dura Watch at 355 grams. And Asada performs the best yet at only 163 grams to make the switch. And the Crescent performed almost as well as the Sada at 172 grams. And the Gear Inch 90 moves into the lead at only 159 grams. The Milwaukee Ratchet is also very easy to work with at 188 grams of force. And the Gear Inch 120 takes a little more force on the directional lever at 220. And the Harbor Freight Icon takes even more force yet at 427 grams or almost a pound. And the Husky continues to perform very well at 170 grams of force which is almost the same as the Gear Inch 90. And the Wearer takes more effort than average at 360 one grams to change directions. And the Hazard also takes more force than average at 305 grams. And the Koken requires a very light touch at only 159 grams to make the switch. And the Stall Wheel is pretty stiff at 391 grams or about 150 grams higher than average. And the Mac Tools isn't quite as effortless as some of the other brands at 285. And the Nepros Gold takes even more force than the Icon at 454 grams or about a pound of force. And the Proto is very smooth at only 140 grams to change directions. And the Snap-on takes a little more force than average at 299 grams. And the TRO Ratchet just takes a feather's touch at only 17 grams. Changing directions with greasy hands should be very easy with the Tro at only 17 grams. The Proto also takes a very light touch at only 140. Several of the other brands also perform very well at under 200 grams. Several of the ratchets have a more compact design than others, but can they handle the high torque? To test the failure load of the ratchets, I'll be using a Proto Torque Wrench Tester, which is accurate down to one-tenth of a foot-pound. Considering the price, the Dura Watch performed well at over 70 foot-pounds, and the drive on the ratchet was a source of failure. A look inside the ratchet and the pawl, as well as the teeth on the main gear, are still in great shape. And the Dura Tech is quite a bit stronger than the Dura Watch at 76.6 foot-pounds. Just like the Dura Watch, the main drive is a source of failure. The teeth on the main gear, as well as the pawl, are still in great shape. And Asada's drive snapped the just under 74 foot-pounds. Just like the Dura Watch, the main drive is a source of failure. A look inside the ratchet and all the internals are still in good shape. And the Crescent has a quick release drive and it gave up at 74.31 foot-pounds. The pawl and the teeth on the main gear are still in great shape. Unlike the previous brands, the Gearance 90 has a solid drive and that makes a huge difference. 90.21 foot-pounds and the drive finally broke. Very impressive! The pawl as well as the teeth on the main gear are still in great shape. Just like the gear wrench, the Milwaukee has a solid drive and that really makes a big difference. And 88.91 foot-pounds is almost as good as the gear wrench 90. The teeth on the main gear are still in great shape, but there's a small amount of damage to the pawl. And the Gearinch 120 uses a dual pawl system. And a solid steel quarter-inch drive snapped at 86.68 foot-pounds to move into the third position. The teeth on the main gear, as well as both pawls, are still in great shape. Just like the gear wrench in the Milwaukee, the Icon has a solid drive, but the ratchet gave up a little early at only 67.88 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, one of the pawls broke, and there's a lot of damage to the teeth on the main gear. And the Husky uses a quick-release-style drive, which offers less strength than a solid drive, and it broke at 73.74 foot-pounds. Pounds. Both pawls and the main gear are still in good shape. And the quick release drive underwear performs similar to other quick release drives, breaking at 73.66 foot pounds. 
The pile as well as the teeth on the main gear are still in great shape. And it has it has a solid drive and is well built, finally breaking at 87.94 foot pounds. Unfortunately, the pile broke and the main gear experienced a lot of damage. And the Koken gave up early at only 66.08 foot pounds. Unfortunately, the pile and the main gear experienced a lot of damage. And the stall wheel has a quick release drive and it let go at 73.6 foot pounds. The teeth on the main gear and the pile are still in great shape. And the Mac Tools has a solid drive and it came very close to matching the Gear Wrench 90 at 89.6 foot pounds. The drive assembly still functions properly and all the ratchet head internals are still in great shape. And the quick release drive used on the Neat Pros just isn't designed for high torque and it broke at 66.24 foot pounds. And the ratchet internals are still in great shape. And the Proto also has a solid drive and it held up very well, finally breaking at 88.5 foot pounds. The ratchet head internals are still working properly and they're in good shape. And the Snap On also has a solid drive, but it gave up a little bit sooner than some of the other ratchets with a solid drive at 82.16 foot pounds. The dual pawl internals are still in great shape and no visible damage to the pawls or teeth on the main gear. And the TRO ratchet uses a quick release drive and it survived, but the gears did not. The teeth on the main gear and one of the pawls experienced some damage. I purchased a 3D printer for use in some upcoming episodes and printed a ratchet made out of carbon fiber nylon. It's all plastic including the internals and it's only designed for 3 inch pounds. I was overly optimistic and the ratchet gave up before registering torque on the torque meter. If you're looking for a ratchet that can survive a lot of torque, the ratchets with a solid drive perform the best. And the Gear Ridge 90 came out on top at 90.21 foot-pounds. Mac Tools finished in a close second at 89.6, Milwaukee 88.91, and Proto 88.5 foot-pounds. If you're needing very light tools, for example, for aviation or a toolkit for a bicycle, the TRO is by far the lightest at only 54.68 grams. Has it weighs around 80 grams, and stall wheel just over 87. So which ratchet is the best? The ratchets are organized from least expensive to most expensive. I converted performance into an A through F grade to help point out strengths and weaknesses of each tool. None of the ratchets achieved straight A's, but several came very close. The Gear Wrench 90 is a terrific ratchet, but it has way too much back drag for a quarter inch ratchet. On the other hand, the Husky is a terrific ratchet that achieved an A in every category except for failure load. However, 70 foot-pounds is still pretty good strength and would be my choice for a ratchet at under $30. If you're willing to spend a little more, the Proto achieved an A-plus in every category except for head size. It's expensive and falls into that buy once, cry once category, but you will get the added benefit of a flex head ratchet. Finally, I really enjoyed testing the TRO ratchet and it has some amazing qualities. I'd really like to know if you're interested in having a tool shootout comparing a bunch of prototype tools against a few premium brands. When it comes to ratchets, there are a lot of brands and I probably missed a few. So please let me know if you'd like to see another ratchet review. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.